So for today, we're gonna to have some introductions by our CEO, our job developer and our counselor. We're going to have some overviews of our programs that we have here at OBT. We're also going to introduce our panelists with some questions from our moderator. And then we're gonna have a participant Q&A. But before we begin, I just wanted to do some quick Zoom intros. So in the chat, I would love if everyone could answer their name, what borough they currently reside in, and what would your dream job be? And no matter if you're in your early or later stages in your career, we're always allowed to dream. So I implore everyone to write, what would their dream job be? Oh, I see we have some wonderful answers coming in. So to keep it moving along, I want to introduce to you our awesome leader, our CEO, Liliana Pola McKenna, to speak and to introduce you to our OBT programs. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you, Sophia. Thanks to everyone for taking the time to be with us today. Um, my name is Liliana Paula McKenna, and as Sophia shared, I'm the Chief Executive Officer at Opportunities for a Better Tomorrow, um, and I have the extreme privilege of, of working side by side with this team. I want to shout out all of our alumni who are on today's call. Thank you so much for taking the time to prepare and, and being here to share your stories um, and also recognize all the work that's gone into putting today together by our outreach team, Sophia, Carolina, and William, and all of our team members who, who joined today. Um, so for those of you who are just getting to know OBT for the first time, um, we've been around for almost 40 years and um, we focus on education, training and jobs. And uh, we've done that for almost four decades. And because we know, I think this is really important, probably now more than ever, life is not linear. There, there is no step-by-step -step guide um, that we all follow and careers are no different. Um, we know that, that high schools can sometimes be really challenging places to, to learn and feel successful um, and can sometimes even feel disconnected from, from the real world and what you're supposed to do next. And that even at graduation, it's not always clear what we're supposed to do next. So that's why we're here. And that's, that's the spot that OBT fills. Um, OBT's programs combine getting to know yourself a little bit better um, your interests a little bit better, building concrete skills, um, and figure out where you want to start building your career, whether that's a full-time job, whether that's college, whether that's a little bit of both. Um, so I encourage you all to stay engaged and ask lots of questions today. You have an incredible group of people here to serve as a resource, and I'm, I'm super excited and thrilled that, that you are all here. So I'll hand it back. Thank you. Thank you so much, Liliana. The next speaker is going to be our senior corporate recruiter, Ms. Serena Good Goodman, to tell us about our awesome job development programs and our boot camps. Hey, Serena. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Serena Goodman. I'm the senior corporate recruiter for Opportunities for a Better Tomorrow. And it's a great pleasure for me to tell you a little bit about what we do here. So my division that I love is employment services. And what we do is we provide very unique and specific uh, employment services to anyone who's interested. So for our young adults, of course, within our programs, we have our boot camps, which is one that we just recently did, which is our customer service boot camp was very successful. We had 20 wonderful young adults, and we had a very great relationship with CVS. And the relationship was that they came in as a partner with us, so we customized the boot camp to prepare people for customer service positions, not only with CVS, but we gave a knowledge that you'd be able to use anywhere. And that's what made it so virtually unique. The fact that everything happened virtually makes it another awesome experience. So it was very, very successful. Many of our young adults are in school now, and uh, many of them are also working. We placed seven young adults in employment already. Some are working for CVS and some have chose to work elsewhere, which is fine because again, we customized it not only for CVS, but for customer service anywhere. So that's the wonderful thing about OBT, is that when we teach you skills and we teach you those abilities to thrive, it's not just in one place, you'll be able to utilize it everywhere. 
in our employment services division, we have a team of five. And in that, we have collectively over 60 years of experience in workforce development. So we bring it to the table a lot of experience about workforce development and a lot about people, a lot about teaching people how to navigate through this process we call success. So the other thing that I want to talk about too is our jobs to build on program. And this is awesome because not only do we service young adults, but if you have relatives, if you have aunties and you have uh, cousins and, and, your, and parents who are unemployed, we're able to provide services to anyone who are 18 years of age or older, uh, as long as they're unemployed or underemployed. And underemployed means that they're working less than 20 hours a week, or they are working below minimum wage, which we don't want to see any of that happening. But the biggest thing is that we're here. We're here for the community. We're here to provide employment services. We're not limited to any particular industry. Our uh, corporate recruiters are very well versed in all of the industries. So we're able to place people in jobs in all different areas. We service the whole individual. And I think that's one of the things that make OBT the unicorn of workforce development is because we service the entire person. We understand that this is a very difficult time. Things are changed, things are out of our control, and we are here to address a lot of things. It's not just the employment component itself, but understanding how to navigate through this thing that we are very uncertain about right now. There's so many battles that we're facing, but together we can achieve success. And we are here, the employment services team is here to support you, support your efforts and finding employment and just making this navigation through the thing that we call life. And so it's, it's just a really wonderful, wonderful opportunity for you if you've never really thought about what your career goals are, how to head to it, what's a stopgap job, how to interview remotely, because look at where we're at right now. We're on a Zoom platform. We're bringing you this information on a Zoom platform. Before we may have been in an open forum, we would have had it in a classroom setting, one person to person, but now we have to think outside of the box and behave outside of the box, right? Because we hear people say think outside of the box often, but to actually do it is another thing. But I, I do want to say this to you. Utilize this time right now, this time of uncertainty, to try to figure things out, to figure out what direction you want to go in in life, what is it that you want to do. Uh, be creative and understand how to communicate to other people. This is a great opportunity to take online trainings. A lot of them are free. Look at this wonderful webinar this morning, so the, this afternoon. So there's so many things that you can take advantage of at this particular time. And please take advantage of the services at OBT. We have wonderful services. We have wonderful caring people who really care about the work that they do. I work on a team of people who are in it because they believe and the opportunities that are available to people. So that's it for me. I guess later on, if you want to have, have any questions for me, I'll be happy to answer them. But just understand that OBT, Employment Services, we've been doing this for a long, long time, and we're here for you. Thank you so much, Serena. I really appreciate that. And you know, one of the things that Serena touched upon is that you know, OBT motto is, you know, high accountability and high support. And what do we really mean by high support? I'm glad that we have Ms. Juan de Sanchez, who is gonna be our next speaker, to speak about what does that wraparound service mean and what does high support actually mean? How do we provide that for our participants? Wanda? Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I hope that you all are having a good afternoon. I hope you have had a good summer. And I'm excited you all are able to join this, um, this afternoon as we, self into the fall. I can already feel it in the air. Am I the only one? <laughs> so I wanted to talk to you guys um, about the counseling services here at OBT. Um, and I want to start by just letting you all know that every participant coming into whatever of our programs is assigned a counselor. And with that, um, what you get is you get to be connected to someone, right? So the fact that you are assigned to a counselor means you have like a designated go-to person to turn to in your journey at OBT. And so why? Why do you need a counselor assigned to you? Well, pretty much um, 
we're here to listen to you. We're here to create plans together for whatever your goal is that you want to achieve. And you've heard it before, this term support, we're here to support you. Okay, so that is our job. We want to be able to guide you in your process. I'm seeing some awesome responses in the chat box in terms of what that dream job of yours are, of yours are. And there are some great responses in there. And it's one thing to have the vision, but it's another thing to be able to carry it out. And when you have that support, um, it makes the ride a little bit smoother. So that's why we're here. Um, so everyone has different challenges, as I'm sure you all know. Sometimes um, it may be emotional. Sometimes it may be mental. Maybe it's personal. You're dealing with some stuff at home, um, financial. It can be even you're facing legal issues. Um, maybe you need assistance with healthcare access or you know, proper attire for an interview we will work with you to get you um, the support that it is that you need. So all of those things I mentioned are areas in which we've held participants in the past. And um, if I were to give you a list, it would be infinite because it goes on. It's not just limited to that. Um, so we're happy to, to, to support you in that way. Uh, one thing we're also really good at is uh, connecting you to other resources. So if we find that we can't give you the support that you need in-house, then what we'll do is we'll definitely research, we'll work together to maybe refer you elsewhere where you can receive that support. So we just want to let you know that you are gonna be in good hands, okay? Um, for my parents, I'm not sure if there's any parents in, in the audience today, but I don't wanna leave uh, without mentioning this very important piece of information. Your assigned counselor will be under the title of child care navigator. And uh, what that means is that you actually have um, an added bonus support service, which is that if you have children under the age of four and maybe they need daycare or child care, what have you, then we have someone to work with you um, in order to obtain that. And another piece that you receive as a parent is also workshops around navigating all that you are with the additional responsibility of being a parent and how things look like, you know, in that role for you. So if there's anyone out there in the audience, know that we've got you. Um, and then you're probably asking yourself, well, how, how does all of this work? Um, if we were in office, pretty much we're building relationship with you from the beginning. We're doing your intakes and your interviews in the beginning. And when you start programs, we're interacting with you daily. Um, we also do weekly sessions with you to check in. And then we also do weekly group sessions where you're able to speak to also your peers in your cohort. So again, like we're, we're holding these sessions and that's, you know, along the, the road, that's how we're building those relationships. And um, it's beautiful, I have to say. And it's not always serious. I know I mentioned, you know, resources and check-ins, and it may sound really deep, but we're also building good times as we go along. Um, even though we're not in office, the work is still taking place. Um, we've had to get very creative this summer in terms of, you know, just trying to keep you engaged as best as possible and holding on to those traditions that we would have if we were in a building office. Um, and I just want to mention like one of the things I thought was so cool that we did um, is that we usually do like a participant of the month or a student of the month. And um, because we couldn't celebrate together as one, we actually sent pizza to the student of the month's homes. And so they were able to do like a quarantine pizza party at home with their family. And so that just shows you that, you know, even though we're in the middle of a global pandemic, like we still want to make sure that you are supported and that you know you feel you feel good about the work that you have been doing. So those are just some of the things um, that are taking place here. I want to um, piggyback off of Ms. Goodman. It's not just because I work here that this may sound biased, um, but really you'll be working with a staff that cares, and I can say this confidently because I see it firsthand. Um, you're going to be in good hands and, and everyone here just like puts their heart into the, their craft and the work that they do. And it's really awesome. It's one of my favorite parts of the job to witness. Um, if you have any questions, 
hang around, throw them into the chat box. And again, I'm glad that you are here and I can't wait to meet some of you very soon. Thank you so much, Wanda. I think that really speaks to a lot of the services that we have and really explains what wraparound service means and really what that high support means. The next speaker I'd like to introduce you to, who is also our, my co-host, is our Director for Community and Government Affairs, Caroline Iasso. Hello, everyone. Um, good afternoon. My name is Caroline. Thank you all so much for being here. Um, I will be facilitating our quiz portion of um, this fair today. So, Sophia, you can go to the next slide. Um, Throughout the presentation, we'll have uh, little mini quizzes. And so how this will work is we will ask a question and we will ask that you submit your answer in the chat box as you guys have been already using wonderfully. Um, the first person to get it right will get $10, okay? So good luck. We're gonna have our first one coming up right now. Um, and let's get to it. Question, what is the first step in planning a successful career? So take a moment and write your answer in the chat box. I'll give you a, a minute. Got some good answers coming in. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, looking good. I think I have seen the answer come in. If we can go to the next slide to see. Self-assessment, understanding your own interests, strengths, weaknesses, and goals. So I will reach out to, we will reach out to the uh, question winner um, shortly and there'll be more coming up throughout the presentation, so pay attention. Thank you, Caroline. So I'd like to introduce myself formally. I'm the Director of Outreach and Community Partnerships, and I wanna introduce you to my outreach team because we'll be talking about doing an overview, rather, of the programs that we have here at OBT. So we have Carolina Hernandez, who is our Community Outreach Specialist, and Mr. Hi, William everyone. Ortiz, our Community Partner Specialist. How are you? Okay, so I just wanted to, you know, as we go into our program, and I just wanted to state what our mission is, because our mission is very important to us, because as you heard from our staff members, you know, our mission is what drives us, and it's what actually informs us in how we make decisions throughout the organization, and that is to break the cycle of poverty and inequity through education and employment, and we deliver our mission through our principles of integrity, excellence, and empowerment. So who does OBT actually serve? We serve over 4,000 youth and adults each year. Our youth population is between 17 and 24, those who are seeking work experience or have their high school diploma or may not have their high school diploma and who are just kind of like unclear about what their plans are after high school or during their, you know, their transition phase. Some college, we also have students that are coming to us with some college education and we do have college access counselors that are here to help navigate the college experience and the college application the process we also have youth parents that we serve in addition to our youth population we serve adults that have language barriers we do have evening classes for english as a second language we have adult hsc programs and we also service adults with job development training So OBT program, just to give you like an overview of the organization, because I know some people may know OBT for their job development or they may know us for our HSE program. So I'm just gonna give you an overview of what programs we actually have. We have an HSE program here, which is our high school equivalency program. We have industry certified credential programs. We have English as a second language class. We have job training and paid internships as well as job placement, which you heard from our job developer, Serena. And we have one-on-one -on -one college access services with counselors that are specifically here to help guide you through that process. In addition, 
We do have specialty boot camps, which we enrolled this, this summer and will be enrolling in the fall as well. Next question, everybody. What is the wage difference between someone with a high school diploma versus someone who does not have a high school diploma? A, $2,000, B, $5,000, or C, $10,000? And we have a winner. The answer, everyone, is a $10,000 difference annually. So congratulations to Patrick Williams. You know, I think that is important when we talk about what is the benefit of having your high school diploma and understanding that there are tangible and very concrete reasons that will help prevent that cycle of poverty, which is why here at OBT, we meet you where you are. We have high school equivalency classes for those that are in pre-HSC phase, which have less credits towards or less regent credits towards your HSC. We have the Advance and Earn program, which you can actually earn your HSC while doing an internship, some paid internships. In addition, we have the Train and Earn program where you can learn your H get, achieve your HSC while obtaining job skills and job certificates. Because it's important that we note that while you're working on your HSC, we wanna keep you focused for the next step. If you have your diploma already, we do have some programs that you can take advantage. And some of the programs that we have are um, Techstar program, our train and earn program, Mainstory restoration technician, technician training program, um, medical administrative assistant, and digital marketing. We'll go over we'll go over these programs in detail in in a few minutes. Question time. Who is the richest person in the world? Put your answer in the chat. Mm -hmm. We seem to be split. We seem to be split up oh, and then an Oprah. I think we can go to the answer. Jeff. Bezos. So Sean, that was you. That was you. You were the winner for this one. Um, he is the founder of Amazon and Amazon Web Services is one of the platforms uh, that we work with in our tech start program, our cloud support engineer program. So congratulations, Sean. We do offer our Techstar program, Cloud Support Engineering. Um, we do uh, prep you for the Cloud Support uh, Protectioner exam from Amazon Web Services. Um, and this program is actually 12 week, full time, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. program. And in this program, what you're getting you're getting not just the technical skills that are needed to be successful in this role, but you're also getting um, the behavior and the mindset that you need to have to be successful, right? So some of the things that we help you develop are um, your communication skills, teamwork, time management, how to have a growth mindset, um, in addition to more of the technical aspect, right? So some of the things that you'll be learning in this program are, um, cloud computing fundamentals, um, security and networking fundamentals, um, database management, and um, in addition to introduction to computing in Python. Um, now, you might not be aware of all of those things. And in fact, you don't need to have any experience in the tech sector to uh, apply for this program. But we do want young adults that are very interested in technology, specifically transitioning to full-time employment in the tech sector. If you know that you know, technology is not for you, not a problem. We have other programs that you might be interested in. Um, and also, once you complete the program, we um, assist you in making sure that you um, have job placement, um, maybe applying to college if that's something that you want to do, or doing um, other advanced training. Um, so we're here to support you. Um, and to be eligible for this program, you have to be 17 to 24. You have to have a high school diploma or equivalent, at least. If you have um, an associate's degree or bachelor's, that's also acceptable. Uh, but you cannot be enrolled in school and you have to be unemployed. Um, you have to be work eligible and you have to reside in New York City. Thank you, Carolina.
Mr. William. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're having a great day. Um, I'm going to introduce to you the Train and Earn program. Um, of all the programs, I really like this program. And I'm saying that all the programs are really good. Um, with the Train and Earn program, you can come to apply for your HSC. Or if you are a grad, you can come to get credentials so that you can get a better job or you can get a job. Okay. Um, one of the good things about uh, the Train and Earn programs is that we run in eight week cycles, okay? So let's say you registered um, for the program, you get eight weeks to complete. If you don't complete, you get evaluated, you get told you, you, you have a counseling session, uh, your previous eight weeks are reviewed so that we can make adjustments so that within the next eight weeks, you'll have a better chance of getting your high school equivalency diploma. For the grads, you do your eight weeks, you come in, you do your eight weeks, you get your credentials, and the credentials that you can get are the certification for Microsoft Office, all of them, a credential in customer service and a credential in, in, in hospitality. And hospitality is good because as you see around the area now, there's a lot of hotels that are going up, okay? And these hotels need people, employees, to, to run the desks, the concierge, uh, so this particular um, credential is very good right now. So I, I, would, I would advise you to take advantage of it. We also have public speaking, work readiness, <clears throat> and occupational skills. And our occupational skills are your computer classes, right, that you'll be getting uh, to help you uh, transition into a job, okay? We also have the college enrollment um, that you will be getting assistance with which is very, very good. We place a lot of young people in colleges and also job placement assistance, all right? So this is the thing, and you're also gonna be, you also can qualify for an internship program, a paid internship, which is up to 150 hours. So let's say after eight weeks, you're ready to go, okay? You graduated, you'll do your internship. After your internship, it's employment, okay? That's for the grads. For the, for the non-grads, you'll go in, you'll get eight weeks. If you need an extra eight week, you get 16 weeks. You get up to a year to complete, to try to get your equivalent, high school equivalency. You get a whole year, okay? Um, but let's say you get it faster. You get your, your HSC, let's say in 16 weeks, then you do your internship and then employment, and you can meet with the college counselor if you wanna keep going and get your college degree, okay? Um, Ms. Sanchez, who's a counselor, also works uh, in the Train and Learn program as a counselor. So she's always there motivating everyone. Um, so it's a very, very good program, whether you're a grad or whether you need your HSC. Uh, to be eligible, you need to be between the ages of 16 and 24, uh, be work eligible, and you must reside in New York City, okay? so. Please take advantage of this program. It's very good. I worked in it and I know it inside out. Thank you. Thank you so much, William. Masonry is one of the oldest trades dating back over 6,000 years. And it is most notably showcased in this desert structure. So please name the desert structure in the chat. Best guess. Yep, we got it, we got it. Thank you, Byron. Let's put that uh, answer up. The Egyptian pyramids. Way to go, everyone. So our Masonry Restoration Technical Training Program, it is a 10, well, in this program, you will be achieving a 10 hour OSHA certification as well as a four hour scaffolding and swing scaffolding certification. And you get eight weeks of paid hands on training. You know, it's not enough that you understand the work. It's with this program, it is very, it's integral it's to the program that you understand and have a hands on experience on how to actually do the work. In addition to their training, you will also be connected with a job developer to help you find employment within the construction and masonry realm. So the eligibility for this program, the age is a little bit wider. So you have to be between 18 and 27, and you need to have your HSC, your high school diploma, reside within New York City, and be eligible to work. Which career field is most in demand right now? 
Answer in the chat for 10 bucks. Some great answers. Looks like most of you knew the answer, which is wonderful. Um, we'll probably have two winners for this one. Um, let's put up the answer. It is the healthcare industry. I think most of you got it, though there was some split on the IT, which is also in demand. Thanks, everybody. So yes, as you know, healthcare is on demand right now. Um, they need a lot of essential employers, employees um, in this industry. And we actually offer the Medical Administrative Assistant Training Program, at OBT, which is a 13-week full-time Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, and in this program, you are learning the medical terminology, billing, you're getting certifications in Microsoft Office, customer service, um, and in addition to getting preparation for the um, National Health Career Association, um, certified medical administrative assistant exam. That was a long, long um, title, but you do get the preparation um, and work experience um, through a paid internship in this program, right? Um, once you complete the, the program, we also assist you with um, employment, um, applying to college if that's what you want, um, or advanced training. Um, so if you are interested um, to be eligible for this program, you need to be 16 to 24. You do need to have a high school diploma at least. If you have an associate's degree or bachelor's, that's also fine. Um, but you cannot be enrolled in school and you have to be an employee um, and need to be work eligible and you need to live in New York City. Um, we had, we started a cycle at the end of August and we are going to have another one um, in a few months. Um, so just stay tuned and we'll send you the information of um, when you can register. Thank you, Carolina. Which beauty mogul became an overnight success because of their social media presence? Let's see some more guesses. Got a couple good guesses. Mm-hmm. Okay, the answer, I have seen the answer. We can announce it, Sophia. It is Kylie Jenner. Thank you, which leads us into our next program. So understanding the digital platforms and social media, you know, that's, it's, it's kind of like you know, secondhand to how we actually live our days today. So that leads us into our next program, which is our digital marketing program. It is a free program where you're going to get 20 weeks of coursework that's going to teach you how to actually engage on these different digital platforms and how to be a digital marketer. So one of the things that are so, that's so important about this program is that it's also wrapped into a paid internship. So in addition to learning about the digital marketing field and learning all of the skills to be a digital marketer, you're also gonna have real life experience in it with a paid internship. And this is all wrapped within the 20 weeks. And this is a program that will be starting actually next week. So if you're interested in this program, please send me a, a message to our OBT outreach email that I'll put inside of the chat because we'd love to get you enrolled. And that leads us to the youth portion of our panel. I am so excited about this portion. Um, you know, one of the most important things about this panel is that, you know, as much as we can all speak to you as staff about the wonderful programs we have here at OBT, it's so important that you actually hear from our OBT alumni about how they experience the programs firsthand and what successes they have from the program. So without further ado, I would like for our panelists to introduce yourselves. You have all been unmuted. So please state your name one at a time and state the OBT program that you attended. 
Hello, everyone. My name is Stephanie Tosas, and I attended the um, Train and Earn program and the Young Adult Internship program. Thank you, Stephanie. Hello, guys. My name is Julie. I entered the, 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 the diploma to get my high school. Thank you, Julie. Uh, my name is Trevor Matthews, and I attended the digital marketing program. Okay, thank you, Trayvon. Do we have any other panelists that would like to introduce themselves? Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Kadeen King, and I attended the Certified Medical Administrative Assistant at OBT. Thank you, Kadeen. Uh, hello, my name is Byron, and uh, I've recently completed the Cloud Support Engineer Program. Thank you. Do you have any more panelists that I may be missing? Well, that. So now we have you all on board. I just wanted to ask you a question to ask a question to the panelists. So if you could describe what led you to OBT and in that, what was like a me memorable experience for you through the process and through the programs here as a participant and how did that impact your life? Um, would you like to start the conversation, Stephanie? Yeah, I can start. So my name is Stephanie again, guys. How are you today? Um, I attended uh, the Young Adult Literacy Program. I'm not sure if I said internship program on my state. It's because I work amongst all the programs. But uh, so yeah, I started um, the Young Adult Literacy Program um, in 2017, building up my math and literacy skills. Um, and then after that, I shortly graduated onto the Tain and Earn Program to obtain my high school equivalency diploma. Um, during uh, my time in the program, I can say it was, it, in the beginning, it was something that was new for me because I shortly just got kicked out of high school in December and then started uh, OBT shortly in, in January. So it was something that I was looking forward to, but at the same time, the, the environment was different for me because when you go into these programs, their, their goal is to get you not only to help you obtain your your, your diploma, but also help you obtain employment as well. And I think for that, I kind of was like a little overwhelmed at the time, um, not only with excitement, but like what's to come next. Um, so yes, yeah, so I did the, the train and earn program. I did the internship program in the train and earn program. Um, and I also landed an employment shortly after. So mind you, I'm also a teen mom. And the reason that I first, um, went to OBT is, was not only because I was kicked out of high school, but also because my brothers, Jose and Alex, joined as well. Um, and I guess I always say to people, it's like we, we all three hit home runs when we came to OBT because it's like, you know, what, what better example than us, all three of us obtain our, you know, high school equivalency diplomas from the same place. Um, and we are at different levels in education wise. So I had about I could say a ninth grade level. Uh, my brother had like about a middle school level and um, my older brother, he had about an 11th grade level um, of education wise. So it doesn't matter what you come in with, it matters what you leave out with, right? Um, so that's, that's how I look at it. And I think I was blessed to even like, you know, be able to continue with the program because it was many times that I wanted to give up. Um, I wanted to give up so many times. Mr. McNaughty, Ms. Sanchez, Mr. Ortiz, everyone pushed every student in there to make sure that we were able to, you know, continue. I'm a team mom. I struggled a lot, you know. I live in a house with my parents. I live in a full house, actually, before I'm in the whole way down. But, you know, I live in a full house, so I still face barriers, but I knock down each barrier each day that, you know, I get up to work, I get up to go to school. I'm currently in school now, thanks to OBT again. So I'm a worker now in OBT. Um, I'm a program associate. I work in the Medical Administrative Assistance Program. I work in the Train and Earn Program. And I also worked in the Young Adult Internship Program and Young Adult Literacy Program. So I say this to, to give you hope that, you know, you would at least give our programs a try. Um, it's flexible for everyone. There's a lot of different opportunities. Um, say, you know, there's some of our, our programs that go up to 20 some years old, but that doesn't mean that we don't offer jobs as well. Um, that doesn't have any age limit, you know? We, we want to continue to push you guys, you know? And me being a teen mom didn't stop me. I'm in college now, I work at OBT. And you know, I'm pushing forward and I'm still getting the help from OBT that I need in order to be successful in life. Um, and this was in 2017 I joined. 
Um, we're 2020 now, right? <laughs> so yeah, just, just continue to push through. Um, I will leave my email below if you guys want to ask me any questions, especially about enrollment as well. You can also reach out to me and I'll be able to help you, um, you know, towards that, that pathway. So thank you for having me. Um, and I thank you for listening to my story and I look forward to listening to the rest of the panelists and all of you guys to join us as well so we can see your journey. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Um, I appreciate you sharing with us. And I, I know that your story resonates with a lot of young people. So I really appreciate that. Um, Julie, would you like to speak next? No problem. Hey guys, my name is Julie. I joined OBC, let me start with the reason. The reason was because of my region. I couldn't pass my about two to three regions and I kept trying, 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 and it wasn't working. So I said, you know what? I wanna try, you know, cause I'm not the type of person that likes staying. If I can't, if I can't get it done, I need to try another way to get things done as quick as possible. And I joined OBT around mid-March, 2019. I uh, finished it around the end of May, graduated in June. I'm currently at a BMCC for my nursing program. And I would say the hardest thing that I, that, not hardest, but uh, it was a challenging thing that I did on OBT was public speaking. And thank God, I will never think I would ever do in my life, but it was something that they pushed me to do. Even till this day, I'm a little nervous speaking in public even right now, but it helped me a little bit to get over that, that fear. I'm also an after school teacher right now because of OBT. They gave me the job when I graduated. Uh, I, I do, I do enjoy it, you know, with little kids. That is something that I'm passionate about too. Um, I don't have other questions. Did I, I don't know if I answered everything. Did I leave something out? I don't know. No. <laughs> if I, left, I, think, yeah, I think but, you're good. Yeah, but something I would say, I strongly believe, is that if you go in there not willing to, you know, get help, no one can help you. Even if, if, even if everyone is there to help you, if you go there with a the mind of, oh, I'm just going there, I don't want to be there, I don't want to be there, you're going to be there forever. If you go there, you're like, okay, I got to get this done. This is, this is just step one. I got to get to my second step. You'll get this. You get it done. Once because you have so many help in whatever you need. Like a mess out of tension, I think, said before, the food, with anything, whatever you need. You ask, they'll help you. Don't go in there, I'm frustrated, I'm blah, 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 and being like angry at everyone. So try your best to stay focused and get it done, you know, and move forward in your life. That's I think that's something. Okay, and good luck. I hope you guys join the program. Thank you so great. much, Julie. <laughs> Trayvon, would you like to share? Yeah, I'll go next. Um, hi, everybody. Um, my name is Trayvon Matthews. Um, I ended up at OBT. I was, I recently, um, I lived in Ohio for a year and I recently just moved back and I was looking for employment. Um, it was kind of hard just trying to find new jobs and stuff like that. So I seen that OBT had a digital marketing program and I decided to sign up because for me, I'm the type of person, I love to um, learn new skills and just pick up whatever I can like learn going forward in the future. It's never, it's never too bad to have as much skills as possible. So um, I signed up for the program. Um, one, because I'm interested in um, fashion so i would like to just um learn how to market my business as well as help my friends out that do music or other career paths that they may choose for themselves i might be able to help them out in that field um so i signed up for obt and seeing that they had a lot of um good like other programs and stuff to be able to help us like you see such as like the high school diploma um i Recently told one of my um, best friends about the high school diploma program, and he also signed up, and he received his high school diploma as well. Um, and from there, um, I completed the digital marketing program, and I earned a Google certificate and also a Facebook marketing um, certificate through the OET program. Um, so right now, I'm currently just um, looking for different jobs in that field, in the digital marketing field. 
Thank you so much for sharing, Trayvon. And, um, you know, I spoke to Trayvon early and I just, you know, we had a conversation because it was so touching to me that, you know, and I told him like, you not only like helped yourself, but you went out and told someone else who needed the help and you kind of led them to OBT and you helped in their story of achieving their HSC. So, you know, this is why we like, you know, our hats off to our alumni and our students and our participants because they help us to move this work, to do this work. So great job, Trayvon. Um, Kay Dean, would you like to add to the to the panel? Uh, yes, I would like to. Um, what led me to OBT was my aunt, um, because she knew that I was in a slum, stealing from the money of my life. And she said I should try OBT because I have a lot of opportunities that might help me get a head start on my journey. <laughs> um, I couldn't hurt, I couldn't hurt trying, and that's when I reached out and started my journey with the um, OBT. Um, so I knew I wanted to work in the medical field, but I just didn't know where. So I decided to try the CMA program and see where it leads me in the future, whether it be a road to the medical field or working in an office. Uh, so far, the most enjoyable part of my program experience um, is the support and the ambience of the OBT staff members, because during this time, everything was quite chaotic and was new to everyone. Mm -hmm. And I like mm -hmm. the fact that they took the time to make sure that I was okay and that I had everything that I needed to be able to finish yeah. this program. And also, I am most proud of the skills that I gained and the things that I got a chance to learn, things that I probably would have had a chance to learn if I didn't start on this journey with OBT, such as managing my finances and sprucing up my um, resume. And on that note, for um, anyone consider joining this program, the CMAA, um, I would encourage you to begin this program with the end in mind and that it will be hard at first, but then again, nothing ever worth anything is not. But um, note that you are not alone. And if you feel lost, there is someone here to help you if you just ask. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, is there, are there any other panelists that I may be missing who would like to speak now? Hello. Uh, hi there, my name is Byron. Um, nice to meet all of you. Um, what led me to my experience with OBT was uh, I was enrolled in the uh, We Care program because I uh, was constantly looking for jobs to see if I could support myself. And one of my uh, job coordinators um, told me about the program, so I decided to try it out because I like I like using technology. It's uh, one of my favorite things to do. And uh, as a result of that, uh, I joined the program in January 2020. I managed to complete it in April 2020. I got my OBT certification. Uh, my most memorable experience with the program was meeting a lot of new people and uh, all the OBT staff that helped me improve myself as a person. I used to be very shy with, uh, oh, um, I'm sorry, I'm not speaking yet. I used to be very shy with, uh, um, with presenting myself and uh, I've never had the courage to speak up before, but with uh, OBT's help, I managed to uh, open up more, present myself, I'm sorry if you hear sirens and everything like that, I live next to a hospital. Um, so yeah, um, it helped me improve as a person and for my, um, for what I have to say to people who want to uh, join the program, if it's not for you, that's okay. <laughs> if it's not for you, that's okay. But if you do want to try it out, that's up to you. Everyone has their own thing they want to do. And I rec I greatly recommend OBT because if it weren't for OBT, I wouldn't be the man I am today. That's, that's about it for me. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
Um, is there any other panelists that I may not be um, recognizing that would like to share this story? Okay, so now that you've heard from our panelists and their personal stories, this is where I would like to open up the questions from, to, from the audience to our panelists. Um, and you can put those questions right here in the chat. Do we have any questions? I know we've been fielding a lot of questions in the chat, um, but if you have any questions directly for our panelists and the experiences that they, that they had at OBT, this would be your opportunity to ask. So we have a question here that was maybe for our digital marketing students. It's what was the most difficult part of the digital marketing program? Um, I would probably say the most difficult part was um, switching over to remote work. But like afterwards, I got um, kind of used to it because so I was in the office. I started the program in, I believe, February. And then the whole um, COVID thing happened. So we had to switch to remote work. So I'll say that was, um, it was just difficult, you know, just trying to adjust to the new schedule, which was waking up every day and then logging on to your computer. And it's just kind of difficult because you're not in person with your, um, with your teachers. So it's like, they just kind of like giving you the work, but the way that they, um, my, my teacher was Mr. Watson. He, he was able to still communicate with us throughout the whole um, process and making the work easiest for us easiest as possible for us uh, as it could be during the circumstances. Thank you. Um, do we have any um, more questions? So I, I see here, so I think that's maybe a program, we have some program questions coming in. And if we haven't gotten a chance to answer your questions in the chat, please email us at obtoutreach at obtjobs.org. Um, I'll keep putting that email address in the chat. And if you have any specific questions, you can always speak to one of our staff members. Um, looking in, so I have another question here. Has a digital marketing IT course made it easier to freelance for you, or are you pushed more into a nine to five direction? Um, I say it's, it's kind of like 50-50, because the digital marketing program, um, it sets you up to, to be at like a beginner's level for digital marketing. But so I say like it's up to you, um, that path that you want to take. So you can either do more research yourself and, and push yourself towards that freelance life, or you could um just start applying for, for jobs within that field, which is like um working at like a marketing agency or working with a company that might need help um with marketing. Thank you for that answer. Um, do we have any other questions? I, I see there's a general question here. Currently, how is the I'm guessing this how ate the the train and earn program, how was the train and earn program structured in terms of scheduling of classes? And I guess this is speaking to whether we're indoors or we're remote. So I saw this question come up a lot in the chat. We are working to a remote and for some of the programs and also to kind of like a hybrid shift, but you know, there's a lot of changes being made. So it's really based on, you know, what is happening, what, around the environments right now. So some of the programs are remote, as we heard some of from our participants that were shifted in the beginning of the pandemic. However, some of it is subject to change depending on the environment that we're in right now. I hope that answers your question. Um, let me see, we have a, another question about intake process. Okay, are there any more questions specifically to our panelists? So this is a good question. I guess I can answer this. What if you want to do the digital marketing program, but don't have a computer? Would you provide one? Once you are actually, once you apply to our programs and you are accepted and enrolled, we do work with the technology needs that you may have, whether it's a computer, access to a computer, or access to Wi-Fi. Do we have any more questions for our panel? So here's a general question. Are there any career seeking opportunities for people graduating who've graduated from college or they paid remote internships? So if you have graduated from college, as we said, we service youth in different areas and we try to meet you where you are. So if you're looking for internship opportunities and job opportunities, we do have job developers on site. We do have on staff rather. And yes, you can reach out to us and our job developers are here to speak with you and work with you and hope to connect you to opportunities. 
-hmm. Will these programs be available to others that are looking to get back into school and obtain their HSC? Absolutely. Um, I'm not sure if you saw in our slides earlier that when it comes to acquiring and achieving your HSC, we meet you at all levels. We have pre-HSC programs, we have HSC programs that are attached to internships, and we have an internship programs that are attached to job skills and training, as well as job development. So yes, if you need to obtain your HSC, we will meet you exactly where you are. Um, let me see if we have any, are there any real estate programs? Not that I know of, not in the program and for now. How does someone with special needs fall into this program? Well, that would come into speaking to us, to our outreach staff and speaking to a counselor. Again, we have wraparound services and counselors here. So we're going to try to work with you, whatever needs you may have to make sure that you're going to be met with an opportunity and support you in any way that we can. So public speaking, I heard that, I heard public speaking a lot. Is there a course for that? So it's not that there's a specific course for public speaking. It's one of the skills that we try to, um, that we implement in all of our programs and all of our courses. So, you know, it's, it's great if you know the work, but you have to be able to communicate it. So making you a better communicator and working with you on those skill sets is one of the things that we do and it permeates through all of our programming. Where can you apply? I will, put up the email again, just reach out to us and we will start the application process. Will the digital marketing program allow me to sell? Um, I may need some more clarification on that question for Matthew. If you wanna clarify, what do you mean by that? And are tablets and laptops provided? I think I may have answered that one. So if once you are enrolled in the program, we will work with you to make sure that your tech needs and your Wi-Fi needs are provided for. When does the cloud support program start? We just started our a pro, a cohort in the summer and we will be starting up again for the next cohort in fall. So if you're interested, please reach out to us and we'll get you get the application process started. When can you when can I contact about applying for HSC program? Anytime. You see the information right now. This is my email is here. Sophia Addison, Carolina Hernandez, Mr. Ortiz, all of us are here. You can at any time you can contact us or the OBT outreach email and we will get you get your application started. Okay, so Matthew, you want to be a filmmaker and you want to sell them, then direct digital marketing is absolutely a place where you can start. Most things that are being sold right now are on digital platforms. So I would absolutely encourage you to apply for that program. And again, that program is starting next week. So Matthew, please connect to us quickly so that we can get you started. When do HSC programs begin? We're starting a class next week, but it's kind of an open enrollment. If you have HSC needs, we'll connect you to classes, but we're beginning the courses in the next week. So if you have, if you're interested in our HSC programs, please again, reach out to us. And I will be sending everyone that's participated in this Zoom today information. So if you by chance didn't get to write it down, don't worry about it. We're going to be sending you an email. Does digital marketing also teach working on Instagram? It teaches about the social media platforms and how digital mar how marketing is done on the digital platforms. So Instagram is included in that as well as Facebook. And it's not a specific program specific for Instagram. It just shows you general, it's a general program on how we market on digital programs, digital platforms rather. Yes, we are conducting tape exams, I believe, but I will, I will, if you, is that eek? I will send you a direct answer for that one. Okay. So we, we have any more questions before we close out? Why can only those without high school diploma or degree participate? So the digital marketing program, when we did the overview, it may have been quick. So the digital marketing program are for students who have their high school diploma currently. Um, again, if you currently have your high school diploma, that's one of the programs that we offer. If you don't have your high school diploma, we have other skills training that we have for the within advanced and earn and train and earn programs. The masonry program will begin in January 2021, but what we will be recruiting in the next couple of weeks. So if you're interested, again, please connect with us and we'll get that application process started. 
Will it be online? I think this may be a course, um, we're discussing the way that will look. Again, it starts in January, 2021. So we do have some time to see and, and plan how that program will look because it's very important that there's hands-on work for this program because it is similar to like an apprenticeship program. So if you get in contact with me, we'll get you more um, real-time information on that. How long is the cloud program? The CSE program is a three month program. And that includes, sorry, the, it's a three month learning program. How long will the HSC program be? That is all dependent on you. I, I think you heard from uh, Julie and, uh, and from Mr. Ortiz who were explained that the course of our HEC program really depends on your own specific path, how close you are to, ach to, to achieving your HSC, and on your pacing. Can you also be a part of the program and work on the side? Some programs, um, some programs you must be unemployed at that time. So that, it depends on the program, Matthew. And I think you're talking about the digital marketing program where I believe you have to be out of school and out of work. So for a digital marketing, you wouldn't be able to work on the side. Can you do the HS pro HSC program and have an internship? Absolutely. So that is one of the levels of the HSC. We have HSC pre-HSC, and then we have HSC program, which is um, advance and earn and train and earn, where the advance and earn program you are doing, it is attached to an internship. Can I do my HSC and then do the digital marketing? Absolutely. So yes, come and do your HSC. And then once you achieve your HSC, then you will be qualified to apply for the digital marketing program. How long is the digital marketing program? I believe that it is, that is a 20 week program. And in that 20 week program, Caroline is very fast. In that 20 week program, it is split between coursework and an actual paid internship. See if there are any for the IT program, would you have to be unemployed? Um, yes. So for the cloud source engineering program, it's an employment, it's a it's a program for unemployed out of school youth. What happens after you apply? Uh, Ralph, once you apply and you connect with us, we follow up through our outreach staff and through our program staff, and we make sure that you're actually going through the enrollment process. But the first thing happens after your application, after you apply, you are, you are contacted by an outreach staff member, and then we will direct you to an information session because although today was just an overview of our program, we want you to kind of understand from soup to nuts what is happening in our programs. So you have an information session which will give you way more information that we're gonna to give today, and that will inform your decision and whether or not you are interested in applying or, or eligible for that program. Is there a limit on how many programs that you can graduate? I think there is a limit per year, but contact me and we'll work and see which programs you're interested in. And we'll see if, we'll see if you are, and, and let me see, does, how many programs you can apply or graduate through. I think that may be, it may be a cap on the year, but contact me and I'll have a detailed answer for you. Will there be an in-person intake? Again, we're still like that is, we're working with a hybrid of remote right now. So in person, it it's all dependent. As you know, like the times changing every day about, you know, through the pandemic, what's safe and what's not safe. So to, I don't have a concrete answer about the intake process. And it really depends on the program as well. But for now, I'll say that, you know, we're working remotely where some things may be on site. But for the most part, I will kind of go over to more of the remote model. Yes, if you're interested in a home, well, not home health aid, it is a healthcare administrative assistant program. And if you are interested, we do offer information sessions. Okay, it looks like uh, we that may be a wrap for today. Um, thank you so much for everyone that participated. This was our first virtual youth resource fair. Um, I appreciate all of the staff members that were here to participate and, you know, a huge applause to our panelists of youth that came out today to allow themselves to honestly speak about their experiences, to be vulnerable and to tell their story so that it can help to inform other people of how to navigate and, you know, and to inform them about the 
the wraparound and the high support and high accountability that we offer here at OBT. Thank you so much for your time. Um, if you have any questions, I'm going to shoot my email out again. And you see the email that's here right here on the screen. I am, S I am Sophia Addison, so you can always directly email me. And Carolina and Mr. William Ortiz, please do reach out to any one of us. And thank you again for participating. It's been a, it's been, it was a great first panel. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone.